How have you found the audiences to be in your first gig here? Very good, very good indeed. They're, they're very appreciative, and uh, yeah, it's it's great. How have audiences changed? I mean, a good mainstream player like yourself, uh, do you find that they are getting younger these days, the jazz audience? Um, well, I think we have a very, uh, you know, Catholic kind of uh, audience. Some young and some uh, older people. I mean, there are still people who want to hear, you know, September in the Rain and Roses of Picardy and there are still performers like myself who really don't really want to give it to them because, uh, you know, I got tired of that, that noise, really. I, I, I built it, and I'm glad so many people enjoyed it, but uh, I find that I'm freer now as a pianist to, uh, to play with just piano and bass. I remember your group you had many, uh, many years ago. Was it Denzel Best and the right. drums and, yep. it, it, mm -hmm. and the, the guitar and, yeah. and the vibra harp? And That's what I was talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but do you find that it's featuring you more? Is that what you enjoy about well, it? Well, uh, it's less re restricting. You know, I mean, when the quintet plays Roses of Picardy, I have to play this and nothing else. I can't play, you know. You know, I can't do this because uh, it wouldn't fit with the with the quintet sound. So I have to lock myself into this, you see. A lot of people have talked about the, this fusion in the modern jazz, uh, to what a lot of people consider to really be dissonance. Do you feel that there, there that there is a melding between a rock and jazz? Is there coming? I, I think I think that jazz is benefiting considerably by a healthy integration between jazz, folk, and rock. I really do. I've watched you sitting here, and you thoroughly enjoy playing. You have an ever-present smile on your face. What do you do in your, in your time off when you're not on the road? I love to play bridge. Um, go tandem cycling. I love to cook. We, uh, my wife and I uh, concoct uh, all kinds of uh, goodies in the, in the kitchen. We love to do that. But do you also, do you find yourself playing or do you stay away from the piano? When you I don't play very much in the daytime. If I have a concerto coming up, or a symphony concert coming up in which I'm playing a concerto, then I will practice because it is necessary to to uh, to have uh, you know to do that, and I hate to say that about uh, in front of this young man here with me today because when I was his age, I did practice you know four hours a day, you know, scales and all kinds of things. But you really have to kind of uh, uh, do that until your fingers are developed. How, how good a player is he? Harry? Yeah. He's a marvelous player, and the thing I like about him is that. Uh, He's a very mature jazz player and is doing extremely well in classical music also. And I wish young people would take uh, advice from the way Harry goes about it. He's studying jazz with one teacher, Ellis Marcellus. He's studying classical uh, with, uh, with another teacher, Betty, uh, what's Betty's last name? Huh? Yeah, Betty Blanc, and then he's uh, studying theory with somebody else. You see, so uh, this is this is great because what what do you hear from from kids of that? Oh man, I'm trying to get into rock, man. You know, and and they, they you know, it's it's tiring because uh, nothing wrong with the better form of rock, but when you close your mind to everything else, that's the kind of musician you're going to be. Did you have as, as sophisticated a training a regimen at, your, at his age when you were? Uh, yes. Oh, yes. I, I studied. Uh, I, I have classical background. How about uh, at his age? How old are you, Harry? Fourteen. Fourteen. Were you as accomplished at fourteen as he is? No age? way. I, there's no way I could play jazz the way this young man is playing at his age. No, I'm, I'm very proud of him. He's, he's doing a marvelous job. Uh, I'm sure this has been asked of you before, but other than as the composer of September in the Rain and Lullaby No, I didn't Line, compose yeah. September in the oh, Rain. I composed Lullaby of yeah. But that uh, Love by the Birdland was what, 1952? Two. And that was for Birdland. In right. New York. And they, were ha they had a disc jockey show, and uh, 
that was to be their theme song for uh, six hours, uh, every hour on the hour. How, how would you like to be remembered? More than the composer of, of, of those and other good tunes, or as a man who's made I would like to be remembered as a consummate musician, one who feels as comfortable in the second movement of a Mozart concerto as he does playing some blues. Harry? session like this with George Shearing, how valuable has, been, has that been for you? It's been very valuable. Uh, Mr. Shearing is, you know, as an authority in the jazz idiom and uh, really has shown me a lot of stuff. Is it a matter of sharing secrets or does he show you techniques and things? He like shows that? me uh, some secrets and some and techniques and uh, just things that, uh, that uh, he knows that I don't know and just helps me learn, you know. Have you, uh, do you feel like you're going to be committing your life to, to jazz, to piano? Do you think it's uh, possible? Um, definitely music. I'm still deciding on how much I'm going to lean to jazz or to classical, but uh, it's definitely music. Young fellow of your age, is it uh, tough, I assume, to put in the hours of practice that is necessary? Uh, um, I don't practice as much as I should. Uh, I, I try when I can, like when, uh, as Mr. Shearing said, when some sort of a performance comes up, I put in a little bit, but uh, I don't, don't, all you people out there don't use me as an example because uh, I, I don't practice as much as I should. Uh, your teachers, do they tell you you should be practicing? Definitely, <laughs> definitely. Do you get black marks like the rest of us for not? Uh, oh, sure, sure. Do uh, you think you're going to be going on, on, on road tours, concert circuits, things like that? Are you planning a life to, to follow that? Um, it depends on what kind of music. You know, the classical musician, I don't know if he has an easier life, but when, when he gets um, more of a name for himself, I'm, I'm sure it's a lot easier than a jazz musician. Yeah, the jazz musicians are the ones that are always constantly yeah, on the road. Constantly so. moving in a, in a pay, apparently. Right. And, uh, what do you think has been the movement in jazz? I mean, a, there seems to be the difference between rock, jazz, and classical. Is there a coming together of any of these? Yes, things? definitely. Um, I, that's why, speaking of classical and jazz, I listen to Mr. Shearing play, and he combines the classical into the jazz, and uh, you can tell immediately 
that he has a classical background, and um, that's incredible watching him play. But uh, the jazz, I think a lot of a lot of it now is mixing them with funk and rock. They're mixing together, and it's hard to differentiate them because uh, they're getting so close together. But uh, now, if you want to talk about the the older jazz and say like new wave and stuff, there's no you know they're totally different. But some of the jazz, like Weather Report, is one group that it's really you know, making funk and, and uh, jazz and rock come close together. They're also very electronic. Do you think Definitely. It's acoustic electronic, is there a problem there? Um, there's, there's not really, I mean, like, as far as synthesizers and electric pianos go, I mean, if, if you can, uh, I like personally the acoustic sound better, um, but if you, if you can make good music with electronic instruments, more power to you, you know. Take off. Okay. Here, hit something. Okay, let's see. Can you hold it like that for one second?